All right, everyone. Your friendly public service announcement. Valentine's Day's coming up. Don't forget those cards out there. Don't forget those cards. Had to call an audible today. I was gonna go do my final comparison. Yes, between the Hoka Carbon Rocket and the Nike Vaporfly 4% Flying It. I was gonna do one more run today, but the family is sick, and so I decided to work from home today to help out as much as I can. So they're all napping. I'm gonna go squeeze in my long run for the week. And usually I don't do long runs on Tuesday, but I am just moving things around. I've got my calendar here. And yes, it's part of the game plan. Like as runners and people that have schedules and work and family, like you just have a general thesis for your training, a general, but don't be afraid at times, not every day, but at times moving a workout like flip-flop. If you, I was gonna do my long run on Thursday, but basically I'm just flip-flopping Tuesday for Thursday because the family is sick. It's okay. It's okay to do that. It's really okay. You're still getting the miles in, getting the kilometers in, into your legs. All right, and a package arrived yesterday. Let's see, I don't know what this is. It says it's from Indiana. Yeah, Indiana. So let's see. No idea what's going on here. Oh my my. Oh, a, co ah, a koozie. A koozie. Sundowner Express. Sundowner Express. Hold on. What is this? Hold on. Seth James Damore. Dear SJD, I have been a subscriber and regular viewer for about five months now. As a runner who also runs a trucking company in Indiana, the insight and gear advice that you provide are priceless, especially as I strive to find the time to develop my running schedule and gear up while raising a young family and a medium-sized trucking company. So thank you. Uh, a little, okay, that's amazing. I won't read the whole thing. That's amazing. Thank you to Luke. All right, and yes, inside is a mouse pad. Yeah, Sundowner Express. Remington, Indiana, and a t-shirt. Oh my goodness, let's see here. Here we go, that's awesome, <laughs> yeah. I love it, I love it. Sundowner Express, Remington, Indiana. That's amazing, shout out again to Luke. Luke, congrats on being an entrepreneur, raising a family, and yes, running, getting those miles in. Even, oh my God, like two busy schedules. You're probably, I'm guessing, doing a lot of early or early morning runs or night runs. I'm guessing, you know, that's how entrepreneurs and family guys gotta do it. For the long run today, I'm gonna be in the Nike Vimero 14s. This is a little bit of a last ditch effort to see if these shoes can be a workhorse shoe in 2019, meaning just putting in miles, not fast miles, just getting miles in, getting miles in, and they feel like a workhorse shoe, but as you know, they've been giving my feet a little bit of pain the last uh, two to three weeks. Last, The last run I was in for these shoes was last week and I was, I was good. So I'm just gonna see one more time, can these shoes pull it off? I don't know. Let's go see. All right, what a day, what a day, all right. A little, uh, a little tip of the day for everybody. It is easy in the long run to keep your form the first two, three, four, five miles of a long run. But the question becomes, can you maintain your form and your cadence and your foot strike uh, at the highest efficiency later in the long run? So at mile 15, 16, 17, or whatever your long run might be. And so, tip of the day is lock in, and you might not be able to listen to music. You might not be able to listen to podcasts and do this, but you gotta lock in to the muscle memory happening early in the run. So like right now, I feel great. I'm actually running a little too fast. I need to slow down. But uh, I'm remembering how my legs feel right now, so that and how my how my form feels right now, so that I can apply it to later in the run. Uh, so I'll do another check-in here in about 12 miles, maybe 15. We'll see. All right, Whew. onward.
Okay, a couple miles to go. And yes, around mile 15, I could start to feel my form start to go a little bit. I held on pretty well this uh, last three miles, but anyway, just focus, focus, focus on that form right now. I can't say too much because I'm hurting. All right, almost home. Why do I run? Why do I run? Here's a big reason why. Hi, boys. I'm here, a sight to behold. Okay. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Let me get some water real. Ran a little faster than I expected to today. Oh, that was good, okay. The question becomes, will the Vomero 14s be a workhorse in 2019? I will just say right now, major, major issue today. Almost a debilitating issue in the Vomero 14s. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Stay tuned. The workhorse, the workhorse. Will the Vomero 14 be the workhorse? We're trying to figure it out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness, 20 miles today. 32 kilometers, 6.30 per mile, four minutes per kilometer, a solid pace for a middle of the week long run. And I'll talk more about the effort today here in a minute. The Vomero 14, which I'm gonna call the V14 from here on out, cause it's a, it's a mouthful. Uh, the V14 was, was released November, 2018, late November. And so it's, a, you know, two or three months old. It is a big update, update to the V13, the Vomero 13. Overall, I was incredibly excited for the overhaul of the Vomero lineup. But then two weeks ago, I believe the pain struck a horrible, horrible pain. Like I, I, I I, I'm trying to figure it out because guess what? Today, no pain on the bottom of my feet. No pain, and I was just waiting and waiting for it, and it never came. It never came. So, and it was on the outside. Uh, so this is good, good news. And but there is a downfall. I'll talk about that in a minute. However, I think that based on yesterday's run in the Skechers Razor Three. I went 6.20 per mile pace, and I think my legs woke up a little bit from a little winter hibernation, and there, that combined with the ride of this shoe today for 20 miles, I was not expecting, I was expecting at least, I was expecting like 7.15 per mile pace today. And my leg, I was going by feel, I didn't look at my watch until like mile eight, and then I glanced down, it was right about the uh, coffee shop actually, when I got the uh, water. So I was like, oh boy, I'm going faster than I anticipated. And I tell you what, I was going fast because the ride felt amazing. If, and there was no pain in my feet. So this is good. This is a good, this is good news for the V14 lineup. So after the water at the coffee shop, pounded out two more miles and then at mile 10 and mile 15, I had to stop and take the shoe off. Why? specifically the left shoe, this one, right at the top of the tongue, I thought my foot was gonna fall off. I, I, I did not, I promise, I did not tie this shoe too tight. But something, and some of you have told me as well, Nike, you did not do the tongue of this shoe correctly. Like, s other people are complaining about this as well. And yes, this is my little rant for the month. Like, Nike, come on now. Like, this tongue is digging into the top of my foot and I don't know if it's the combination of the fly wire cable and I pro like I loosened it twice on the run. Twice today I had to stop and loosen the shoe. And by the end I was like, gosh, if I loosen any more, I might as well just not even tie the shoe. But sure enough, like right here through the top of the tongue, it was digging into, the t into my foot and it was so painful. Almost, as I said earlier, almost debilitating. So Nike, if you're listening, could you help a brother out and fit and just let me know like what was your thought process behind this tongue? Basically what everyone is saying in the comments and other people on Strava is that the tongue is not tall enough. Like they should have added, I don't know, more padding and then maybe like another half an inch of material up here, right, right, right there, right there on the V14. Oh, help a brother out. So that was the debilitating situation today. Other than that, Right now, I'm gonna say right now, this shoe went from like a six, 
from earlier, like at the beginning of the day, to a seven and a half on a on a on a ten scale. Six to a seven and a half on a ten scale. This shoe is moving up, and yes, at this point, I am gonna keep it in the option list of a workhorse shoe for 2019. Meaning, when I'm doing the 20, 22 mile, maybe 23 mile long runs, getting ready for the marathon, there's a chance this guy's gonna be in the lineup. Okay. And so now, the next time I do take the V14 out, I will be monitoring that pain through the basically the front of my ankle uh, where the top of the tongue hits. We shall see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, the keyword for this vlog is horse because I'm trying to figure out is the V14 going to be a workhorse for 2019? Right now, it's still in the running. It's still in the running, all right? The horses are lined up in the uh, in the gate, and they're about to take off, and the mileage continues to rise as I do the first peak in this mileage. So if you're wondering, like, wow, Seth, a 20-mile run, three months away from a marathon, that sounds like a lot. Don't do that unless you're planning a double peak. So I'm going to peak over the next uh, three to four weeks, and then I'm going to come back down in volume. I'm actually going to take two or three days off in early March after the first race. And then I'll rise back up. I'm a big believer that you can't maintain high volume for months and months. And so I'm going to peak in late February, early March. And then drop down and then rise back up. So I'm just trying to figure out, will this be part of the rise in March and April? That's the deal. That's the deal. And guess what? It's Valentine's Day for True Love and I. We're celebrating early, and so I got the card. We are going to go off to date night. So I'm going to let True Love actually ask the question of the day. So stay tuned for that. True Love, uh, she doesn't know this yet. So love you, honey. Love you. You got to come up with a question of the day. She'll do great. She'll do great. All right. Whew, let's go. Date night. <laughs> Hello, date night. Early Valentine's Day Aww. at Texas Roadhouse. Here we go. Yes, boom. Boom. Pro tip. Rock and roll pro tip. Do, do, do date night. Do Valentine's Day night. Not on Valentine's Day, unless you're the pool. Unless you're. Unless you do that, then yay! Hi. <laughs> I love it. That's us. <laughs> and here's the meat. I won't even I won't even say it. I won't even You're say so it. Handsome. But am I but no, I won't even friend. say it. Check, check, and check. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> we got it. Thank you, hon. <laughs> oh, out to the car. I know. You want me to pull the car up? Oh, no, that's okay. We got a good spot. Oh, yeah. It's not too bad. I always snag these for the kids. Yes, it's a little indeed. calling for like a oh, moment when smart. we're waiting at a dentist appointment or something. Dinner was delicious. Amazing. <sighs> My favorite. Happy Valentine's Day, True Love. Aww. All right, signing off. True love has the question of the day for you. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I was thinking of this. Last week, Joseph's school had a snow day, and it was his first ever snow day. And we had so much fun at home playing together in the snow and hot chocolate and everything. But my question to you is, if you had a snow day this week, what would you do with your run? Would you go farther, um, harder, longer, different terrain? What would your run look like with all that extra time? Yeah. And what kind of joy would that <laughs> instill in you? All right, there we go. What's your snow day, you two? <clears throat> what does your snow day from work, from school, from, yeah, yeah what would it look like? Would you go to the spa? Huh? I, that's hey, me. <laughs> go, go running and then go to the spa. All right, answer down below. You guys are the best and seek beauty. Work hard. And love each other. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.